Good morning. Who can help God's people and who can hurt them? Today our readings at Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 12 to 17. For thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe, there is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up, you have no healing medicines. All of your lovers have forgotten you, they do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. Why do you cry about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable. Because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased, I have done these things to you. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those who plunder you shall become plunder, and all who prey upon you, I will make a prey. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, no one seeks her. So God's people are their own worst enemies. He gave them free choice. They can use it to do right or to do wrong, and they've used it to do wrong. They've sinned. They're guilty. And there's no way they can cure themselves. There's nothing they can do to get a solution on this. God is their only source of potential help. They've tried the Egyptians. They've tried diplomacy. All that's come to nothing. Where are their lovers? God is the one that can save them. And those who harm them will answer to God. He will punish him, but only he can help his people. Only he can cure them. Verse 17 says he's their healer. He's the only one. He hasn't abandoned them. His people are confused. They they feel like the nations come to nothing. But it's the very fact of God's chastening that shows that he still cares. He's still working for them. He's doing what's necessary to bring them healing, and that even itself gives them hope. They've gone a long way from his purposes, so it's going to be hard for them to see this at first, but but he's working for them. He's looking to bring them back. And he sends a message by Jeremiah to kindle hope. When we return to him, he will heal us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right in your will. We notice what's happened with the kingdom of Judah and and Jeremiah and the captives sent away to Babylon. Lord, they feel discouraged, but you want to encourage and strengthen them, Lord. And we feel discouraged sometimes in our world. We feel like the world is running over the edges of the church that there isn't a lot left to work with. But Lord, you know there is. You, you've got the plan. We submit to you, Lord. We, we look to you. You are our king, and we will serve you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers today. Thank you for giving us hope. In a time of chaos and strangeness, we can still look to your throne and to Jesus. This is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. So only God can help his people. When things first appear hopeless, take heart. God is still on his throne. And he's willing to go to very great lengths to bring us back onto his path. God be with you today.